today is Kirchhoff's current and voltage laws. Okay, from now on, shorten to KVL and KCL. And we're going to do their use in solving DC at this stage circuit problems all right so that's what we're going to do in this session today so again of the examples I'm going to do up here won't follow those that are in the notes they're extra examples um, And there are tutorial questions in the notes that you can, we'll be working on a bit later on, okay? So that's, that's what we're doing. So, Kirchhoff's current law. Right. What Kirchhoff's current law states that it's very important that it is at any instant in time okay the sum of the currents at any junction equal zero. Okay. In Not quite, not yet, no, not with this. What we're saying is that by, e.g., by KCL, if we've got a node with, let's say, four currents, I1 plus I2 plus I3 plus I4, and in fact, to IN, A equals zero, at a single junction. So what we're saying is if we've got a junction there like that and we've got a current there for instance yeah, if we add all them currents together they equal zero. Anyone is anyone confused by that? What you have to be careful about is the direction of the arrows, right? This one here is going in, those two are leaving. Yeah. Therefore, if we consider going in as positive, we're adding current to that junction, leaving it has got to be considered negative. So another way of writing this is I1 is equal to I2 plus I3. Yep. So with it, 
Another way of saying Kirchhoff's law is to say that the sum of the currents going into a node or junction is equal to the sum of the currents leaving that junction. And I'll find describing it that way is more understandable to the students I teach than that statement about them all summing up to zero. Because that statement means at least one of these must be considered negative in compared to all the others. More than one might be negative in terms of the others. So we, what I tend to do is teach a system where you put all the going in currents on one side of the equation, all the leaving currents on the other, rearrange then if necessary to find the one you're looking for. So what Kirchhoff's law allows us to do is if at any junction we know all bar one of the currents, we can use Kirchhoff's law to find the unknown one. Because everything that goes into that junction leaves it. There aren't any leaks off in the atmosphere or anything like that. Everything, everything that goes up there eventually Remember, comes back to the source when we got a full circuit. We already talked about that. Yeah. Is everybody happy so far? So, let's have a look at an example of how we might use that problem. There's a junction. Another one, three amps, I4, five amps, I2, unknown. I3 is 4 amps. Okay. Now, we're, we're focusing on just one junction at the moment. A bit later on, we'll be focusing on an actual circuit and how we can use Kirchhoff's law to, to help solve it. When you want to solve um, a problem like this, we need to write... Kirchhoff's current law equation. Yeah. And the method I'm suggesting that you do is write ingoing currents on the left hand side of equals outgoing on right hand side of the equal sign like this don't it will not make any difference because you usually going to have to rearrange it to the to the current that you're looking for anyway but if at least at this stage if you're systematic about the way you go about doing this Okay, doesn't matter. It would not matter if I put out going on the left and in going on the right. It would make no difference. You still should get the same answer. Okay. The other thing about this, as you're going to see a bit later on, is you're going to put currents on one side or the other according to the direction of the arrows, whether it's going in or out. If you end up with a negative current. It doesn't mean that you've got a wrong answer. It means that the error at that instant in time is indicating the currents in the wrong direction. And you're going to come up against some problems later on in your studies where you'll put an arrow on in an arbitrary di direction that you would think the current would normally go. And actually in that circuit at that instant, that's actually going the other way. Okay? You're going to come up against problems like that. So a negative current does not mean the answer's wrong necessarily. It means that the arrow that you set your Kirchhoff's equation to is, that, is indicating the current's going in the opposite direction to what it actually is. Okay? So 
in this particular case, all the ingoing currents are A1 on my thing here. Let's put that the other way. In. So I3 is in. So I1 plus I3 is equal to I2 plus I4. So we've got two currents on either side. We want to find I2. So how? what do we need to do? Subtract I4 from both sides. I'm going to write I2 on this side because I'm a bit fussy and I like to have what I'm finding on the left-hand side. That's equal to I1 plus I3 minus I4. Now we can put the numbers in. And I'm modelling here how I would expect you to like current law answer out in an exam question. Stage by stage so I can see where your thinking comes from. So we got I1 as 3 amps. I, I3 is 4 and I5 is 5. So the final answer, 3 plus 4 is 7 minus 5, so I2 is 2 amps. Yep, everyone happy? Not hearing any dissenting voices. It's marked A and B. So just write the equations in the same form of with, as we've done the last one. Right, so what we got at node A, what's, what, what have you got? Node, there's an E in node. Yep, I would think so. I1 is going in, I4 is going in. I3 is leaving. I agree with that. Yep. And that node B. I3 is in. I5 is in. I2 is leaving. Yep. So, how many currents do I need to know to solve the whole circuit? Three? Yeah. So I can pick any three, can I? I, 
I1, I3. Sure. On solve that maybe. So I, I'm not going to put it back. I just want to, I just want another version to, to demonstrate a point. So, using those two equations, we've got two unknowns, but using the two equations, we can solve that kind of circuit. Okay? My copies of that won't demonstrate the other, the other situation I want to show you, so I'm going to draw a different one. Right, on that circuit, worry too much about getting it down for a minute. I1 is 6.5 amps, I2 is 4 amps. I3 is question mark. Can you see how we could use Kirchhoff's current law to find the current I3? The, the point about the point about this example is right. You you could go along this diagram and say, well, I've got some current going that way, and some going there, and here some might go down there, some down there, and again it all joins up there, and there's some flowing there, right? But in that within that dashed line box there. If you're not interested in the current going through R1, 2, 3, 4, or 5, you're just interested in what's going in and out of that network, you can treat that network inside that box as just a junction. Because everything going into that junction, i.e. I1 and I3, has to be leaving via R2, because nothing gets lost inside there. All the current that enters that point must leave it somewhere else. So although you know nothing about these small currents through all these resistors, you can apply Kirchhoff's law to the I1, I2, and I3 with that being a black box in there. I'm not interested in it. Yeah? So... We can we can we can write a Kirchhoff's current law equation for this. And we got I1 and I3 going in. And the only one leaving is I2. So I2 is equal to 6.5. Oh, hang on, we want I3, don't we? So we've got to rearrange. I3 is equal to I2 minus I1. Right, yeah, well, I said you might do, didn't I? That equals 4 minus 6.5 equals 
minus 2.5 amps. All that means at this instant in time is, although by con for some other conventional reason, you would put uh, an arrow going that way for I3, at this instant in time, under these conditions, the current has actually flowing that way. Because circuit conditions are quite often transient. They change according to other things that happen in a circuit. So you apply, when you apply Kirchhoff's current law, you're applying it at an instant in time. Yep. So all that actually means is that at this instant in time, the current's not flowing in at, node, at, at this node here, I3. It's actually going in the opposite direction. It's actually negative. So we could turn the, the arrow the other way round, or we can say I3 is minus 2.5 amps. Put the arrow the other way, it would be positive 2.5 amps. Everyone happy with that? Yeah? 